Hey guys and welcome back and today I want to continue looking at the EMU or IMU Cell Pro smart camera system. Now for those that have already not if you're not a follower of this channel I've already done a hardware review of the base station and pod setup that you can get from those guys there and today I'm going to look at the software. I'm going to set it up for the first time and then do an overview of the overall software. Now it's worth noting straight away off the bat you will need to have an internet connection as you have to set up an account with the IMU um, system but it's worth highlighting that you need to do this with pretty much any service provider in order to have external access which is kind of important and that same thing goes if you're going to be using smart systems like Alexa and Google Assistant all of these will always require an internet connection so I'm not going to be too harsh about them about this but you need to download the IMU um, application from uh, the iOS App Center or Google Play Store and once you've got that installed it will invite you to create an account. I've already done that prior to the setup of this application but what, what it's doing right now is I'm going to add the device for the first time. I already added it earlier on but I'm going to re-add it now so I apologize if this is slightly different to the way you set it up for the first time but it should be near enough identical. So the first thing we need to do is head up here to the plus symbol and then we have to scan the bottom of the device we're going to use. So now we've scanned the device, it's automatically found the bottom of it and now it's inviting us to enter that password. And there you have it, the device is set up and it's recognised the camera that I set up previously. It's worth highlighting that if I hadn't already set up a camera, I'm just going to wave here to give you some idea what the delay factor is there, it's about a couple of seconds. If you set it up for the first time, then your camera will have to be added manually. But all you have to do is hold the synchronization button on the back of the camera and on the back of the docking station. But the picture quality is actually surprisingly good, given that we're bouncing off a web server. This isn't over the network. What we're accessing right now is the camera over the network, but I'm accessing the base via the internet, which is pretty impressive indeed. Now, there's all kind of things you can do here. For a start, you can take snapshots like this. And hopefully that's taken a picture of me there. You're seeing the rare other side of the room, by the way, with all the soundproofing stuff built into it. On top of that, the device is currently recording to a USB stick that's been attached to the rear of the device. Now, it's worth highlighting while I look at either the camera or I look at the mic and never looking at the phone for any reason, that when you set this device up, it can back up to the cloud, it can back up to a USB stick, it can back up to uh, even a multitude of different ways on this device, though it does not support now, so do bear that in mind. And can you believe I'm doing screen recording and my hand is still waving around? It's also worth highlighting that I apologise in advance if there is any recording issues here while I'm screen recording this footage. Now... There's lots of options here that when I click them may well disrupt the recording of this video, but I'm going to give it a go nevertheless. First thing we can do, we can completely full screen this if we choose. We'll bring that back down. And you can see that when you come out of the camera, what it does is then just in the background there, just hold a static picture. But if we click play, we can go into it and it will access our camera. Now on top of that, we can choose the definition that we're going to be viewing it in. This may very well disrupt recording while we're going here. This is a much higher definition, a lot sharper as well. And we can switch back to the different modes as we see fit. Now at the moment it's muted, but if I turn this up, do expect some feedback. Some feedback. feedback. And you can get the delay. As you can see, perfect. We're going to mute that there. On top of that, there are recordings happening all the time and recorded history will be kept here on a timeline. Now, going back, we can, as if you look at the bottom of the screen there, you can see video recording, uh, recordings, snapshot recordings and audio recordings too. And we can break it down a lot further. And if you want to use the cloud storage, you do get 30 days for free. So it really depends on your own setup. But of course, back here, we look at different recordings that have happened already on the USB stick on the rear of this device that I've recorded in the background there. And again, I'm not gonna try and play them because it will disrupt the screen recording on this and you can completely maximize the timeline and go back to some of those recordings if you so choose. And these are ones where I'll set up the camera for the first time you Can go all the way around while we are setting it up, getting it ready for the recording. And all of that there in the background, lovely smooth recordings indeed. If we go back, 
to the live recordings of this. I'm going to wave back at the camera. This is definitely one of the most fluid uh, network camera experiences I've had. Now, the only NAS-based alternative I would recommend is Synology's platform compared with this. Don't get me wrong, QVR Pro is damn good, but in terms of NAS use, Surveillance Station is still tip-top, and if you're not going to use a NAS at all, this is easily the most fluid recordings I've ever seen yet in this field of things. Now, if we, there's other things we can do. You can share this recording and share access to this camera with other users via email and a multitude of other means. On top of that, you can configure a lot of things about the microphone, You can uh, about the camera. You can change the battery consumption, which at the moment, it should be added, this camera I've had running now for about a week and a half. And that battery at 65% is still phenomenally impressive. You can also obviously change the notifications and how the notifications reach you. You may notice that I've disabled alarm notifications. I've done this largely because once you set the device up for the first time, it notices everything and it will do loads of notifications from the offset. But you can change those quite impressively. And of course, um, utilizing those individual infrared sensors, you can get better detection of motion than things like tree movement and stuff. And that's with the help of PIR. Now, moving forward, there are loads of other options, and of course, you can add more pods and more cameras very, very easily indeed. If we go back, and this is the overview, and I'm not going to rate your app yet, it's way too soon in the day for that. I'm still going to rate it pretty high, I'll be honest. And you can get real time information about the camera you're using and how you want to change those notifications more. You can give direct access once again to those options that we saw earlier on, and individual messages and push notifications and intrusion alarms as you can see there have all been highlighted because when we default set up the camera for the first time it noticed large degrees of movement on that footage. Now if we go all the way back we can learn more information about the different alerts that have been presented and you can change the push notifications to be a lot more bespoke if you so choose. Come out of that app a little too soon. Now there's the account that you create for yourself and from here you can do lots more uh, more bespoke options. Geofencing of course is the ability to draw lines over recorded areas and footage and to basically draw where cameras are going to be placed in a locational area using a 3D map and representation. There's other tools that you can utilize for the device in the background. This is using both the pods and the base station itself. And of course, adding more devices and more cameras and synchronizing them together will create an even greater surveillance network in your network environment. Now, the settings, of course, can be personalized a great deal. From here, we can create a far more bespoke notification uh, um, environment. You can set it up, you only receive things on Wi-Fi. You can set it up that you only um, get things that allow over cellular networks, which will then um, decrease the size of those H.265 recordings, which are already a greater compression technique than H.264. But if we move forward and go back into the device, we can wrap things up and talk a little about what we've learned so far. Now, if there were more pods, I'm sure I'd be able to show you more. But for now, I'm going to make my way back into this user interface, as you can see here. And we're seeing here a live recording here of the past. We're waving, done. We're catching up now. It's a little bit behind. And that's really it. This has been our overview of the software of the iMu Cell Pro. Once again, this is not the cheapest camera out there. I, w I wish I could tell you that this is one of the most affordable. It really isn't. But with that price that you're paying, you are getting quite a quality camera. Don't get me wrong, there's not everything is perfect to me. One, the fact that you can't use it with a NAS system is a little bit disappointing. The fact that you can't um, attach any cameras, you can only utilize their proprietary cameras, is a little disappointing. But again, I can see why they've done that. And of course, how the device interacts overall over greater distances is something we're still red, we're still going to have to see. But for me personally, let's see if what happens when we turn the lights off in this room. Get rid of some of these lights. How does the device react to darkness? Now. 
nearly deactivated all the lights and straight away I can see the infrared has already kicked in quite substantially. So even though I've deactivated almost all lights apart from the monitor, let's deactivate that as well, it's still pretty clear for almost complete darkness. There's one window darted all the way over there and we're still getting a tremendous sense of light. To put that into perspective, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come out of the application and switch to the camera on this phone to give you some idea about what the difference is between what you're seeing and real camera work. So if we go to the rotation here, it's actually a great deal darker than what you were seeing on that application. Whereas if we go back to it, and we reconnect to that camera, you can see that even though I'm in darkness, that camera is still showing a hell of a lot more light overall. And that's what I think is the most important. I do apologize if the sound has been a bit wavy in today's video. I've had to walk around quite a lot, but that has been my software overview. Still pretty impressed with it. And I'm looking forward to comparing it against a few other IR cameras, um, uh, sorry, IP cameras in the near future. Click like and subscribe to learn more, and I'll see you on the next video.